Hi, my name is Sophia. Welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about what I keep in my home in order to stay safe and to have some peace of mind when I go to bed at night. Other than a fire extinguisher and multiple carbon monoxide and fire detectors, we are going to talk about what gear I keep in order to protect myself from a home intruder or anything else of the sort. Firstly, I have an alarm system guarding my house at all times. The only time it's off is when I am entering or exiting my house. And the brand, if you would like to know, is Simply Safe. I do not work with them. They are not sponsoring this video, but so far I've had a great experience with them. They have so many pieces of gear that you can use to customize the safety of your home. First of all, I have a doorbell camera. This allows me to see anyone coming to my door, knocking on the door, and of course anyone on my front patio. Other than that, I have exterior cameras lining the outside of my house just in case I am not able to see them from the front. Kind of makes sense, right? If you're thinking about someone wanting to break into your home, they're most likely going to go to the sides or the back because the street view of the house is the most exposed to others. I also have an indoor camera in the case that someone takes out my outdoor cameras. This is kind of a backup and it also gives another view of the front door. And in the case that someone does break in, it gives further proof that they did so. I don't have any indoor cameras in a space where I might be particularly vulnerable because I don't like the idea of someone being able to hack that. It's just in a place where I can see the entryways from the inside. I also have window sensors on every single window in my house, including the upstairs windows. This is because when I was arming the house, I kind of adopted the mentality of what would I do if I was trying to break in? Well, I'd probably try to gain access via the second floor because I might assume that the first floor is the only floor that has sensors on entryways or on windows. So in that case, I went ahead just to be safe and I also have a sensor on the upstairs windows. Next, I have a panic button next to my bedside table. When I wake up from sleep, I am at my most vulnerable. I'm disoriented. I also don't carry when I sleep. So this kind of takes away that time and energy I would have to put into alerting the authorities in the case of a break-in. All I have to do is click this button twice and the authorities will show. Home defense systems do not always deter people that are trying to break into your home, but it will give you the advantage by giving you some time to react. Before I get into which firearm I keep on my bedside table, I would like to mention that it is so important to have hand-to-hand -hand and ground combative skills in addition to knowing how to use your firearm. You don't know where you will be in your home and there are times where you may not be able to go access your firearm and you will have to fight hand-to-hand. -hand. So I highly encourage you to look into some type of martial arts, whether it be MMA, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or something of the like. From there, you can further yourself even more by training weapons-based grappling. I've also taken room clearing classes that have helped me orient myself when it comes to clearing my own home if I do hear something. If you have little ones at home or anyone else in your house, this is also important to train so that you can get them to safety. So the firearm I keep by my bedside table is the Glock 19 and I house it in the Stopbox Pro. This is because while I do not have little ones myself, I do have family and friends that bring their children over and they like to run around the house and touch things. You know how children are. So I like to deny them access by having something like the Stopbox Pro. While this video is not sponsored and I'm not getting paid to say anything I'm about to say about the Stopbox Pro, Stopbox themselves did send me the safe. I've actually been looking for a safe that doesn't require batteries or electronics because the one I used before this denied me access several times when I was just doing routine cleaning and taking it to the range. This is pretty worrisome because if it's not working in the situations where I'm not in a rush, imagine when I am in a rush. Pretty scary. My first impressions of the Stopbox are that it is incredibly rugged, light, and easy to use. From the second I opened the box, it took under five minutes for me to change the combination and learn how to use it. And the only reason it took me five minutes is because I couldn't find my Phillips screwdriver. That was fun. Upon opening the box, you'll see a QR code that you can scan and it takes you to a video that explains step-by-step -step how to change the combination to your unique code. To open the box, you apply pressure with your palm, you depress the thumb button, and then of course you press down on whatever combination you set with the other four fingers. Stopbox advertises how easy it is for you to draw your firearm, so I put this to the test by using the in-app part timer in the Live Fire app, and I was able to open the box in under a second. And this was after I changed it to my unique code. I'll also be traveling with this next time I fly anywhere because it is TSA padlock and security cable compliant. In addition to my firearm, I always have a flashlight. Currently, I do not have a weapon mounted light on my Glock 19, so I have a flashlight and I train low light situations with this flashlight. This kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier with the training because I'm using a flashlight Light, I have of course trained low light situations along with low light and room clearing. I also have an emergency
emergency action plan with my husband. So this looks like what would we do if someone broke in our home from all of the different entry points. When I lived alone, I didn't have to discuss this with anyone, but since I live with someone now, we have a clear line of communication so that we're not panicking and trying to figure it out in the moment. Another piece of safety equipment I have is a door bar. This essentially goes under the handle of a door in order to make it harder for someone breaking down that door. While I do have a lock on my bedroom door, this supplies an extra level of force that is pushing back on the door. I also travel with this when I stay in hotels and Airbnbs to add that extra layer of security. Lastly, I have a PO box in the case that someone wants to send me something, especially in the industry I work in. I get gear a lot to review, so I like to have this in place of my home address. This gives me some peace of mind and just kind of a layer of protection. I really hope this video helped you. If you know anyone who lives alone or with the family and hasn't really thought through these topics, please share this video with them. It helps content creators so much by sharing and liking the videos, especially if it helped you out. If there was anything I mentioned today that you would like me to go into more detail with, please comment that below. Or if there are any topics that I haven't covered yet that you want me to cover, comment them. I will be checking. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos and I'll see you in the next one.